Could hyperbaric oxygen therapy support somebody with an autoimmune diagnosis? And if so, what would some of those protocols look like? These patients have chronically elevated inflammatory cytokines inside of their body, and we know that hyperbaric can reduce them. We also know that a full range of pressures could have an effect on the inflammatory molecules inside of our body. So every pressure from 1.3 or a soft chamber all the way through two atmospheres and more all have an impact on reducing the inflammatory response inside of the body. Another thing we're starting to learn now is that certain pressures may impact certain cytokines more than others. In other words, lower pressure may have a greater effect on certain people. Higher pressure may have a certain effect on other people. Either way, in all of my protocols, we always start at lower pressures because we really want to do a gentle introduction to allow the body to adapt to these varying pressures of oxygen. So we always start at a 1.3 range and we slowly build patients through up to higher pressures if higher pressures are even needed. So we'll typically do three to five sessions at a 1.3, building into another three to five sessions at 1.5, building to another three to five sessions at 1.75. Very rarely for an autoimmune case do I feel the need to even get to two atmospheres or above. Almost exclusively, every one of these cases would typically do at least 40 hours of treatment. And we try to maintain four to six hours a week for eight to 10 weeks to get to that 40 hours. There will be reductions of inflammation in less than 40 hours. We typically see reductions of inflammation even somewhere between eight and 12 hours of treatment. But it's not until 20, 30, 40 hours that we really start to get the repair mechanisms the stem cell mobilization, the growth factors releasing. And so these longer protocols are not only geared to lowering their inflammation, they're also geared towards actually stimulating cellular and tissue repair so that some of the long-term consequences of this disease could start to become reversed.